Good news again, everyone. Futurama is officially returning this summer. Plus, we got the final 10 titles for new Futurama episodes in the upcoming Hulu run. Back in August, thanks to the Electronic Identification Registry, we got the titles for the first 10 upcoming Futurama episodes that will air on Hulu this year. If you missed my video on those titles and the speculation that came with, be sure to go check that out. But now, we've officially got the titles for the following 10 episodes that will air next year in 2024. I got some speculating to do. But before we get into these new titles, there are actually a few updates. First, one of the previous 10 titles we speculated about has changed slightly. I Know What You Did Last Xmas is now I Know What You Did Next Xmas. Small change, but not insignificant. I still think this will be a sort of horror Christmas mashup, as many of the Robot Santa sequences are, with Robot Santa constantly trying to kill people for being on the naughty list. The immediate thought that came to mind was that it could be about Robot Santa now predicting the bad things people will do, instead of just seeing and judging them, maybe through some kind of upgrade. This could lead to a stalking or slasher movie type situation, where Robot Santa is trying to track down a member of the Planet Express crew for a crime they plan to commit the following Christmas. Just an idea. The other piece of big news is that at the Futurama San Francisco Sketchfest panel last weekend, David X. Cohen confirmed that the show will be returning sometime in the summer, which at this point really is right around the corner. Lauren Tom echoed this statement later on Twitter. This is actually about the earliest I would have imagined them being able to release the new season, so we should expect a release probably sometime between June and August. Another thing they confirmed at the Sketchfest panel is that there will be a COVID episode. I know, I know. Don't whine to me about it. It. We all figured it out from the Rage Against the Vaccine title, but I really think everyone should kind of chill about this. The show has always been topical, and while it could be an obnoxious subject to explore, they could also definitely have a fun future twist on it. They literally already did an episode where they had to create a vaccine for the common cold in Cold Warriors. I don't know. It could be bad, but let's at least watch it first. No fair! You change the outcome by measuring it! And the last piece of, in my opinion, extremely exciting information about the revival is that David X. Cohen claims that certain Futurama stories from 10 or 20 years ago could have unexpected payoffs in the upcoming episodes. Yeah, I think this definitely confirms that a couple of the episodes I mentioned in the last video will be sequels, particularly Children of a Lesser Bog, which I fully expect to be about Kiff and Amy's kids, or Kiff and Leela's biological kids, you get it. And Parasites Regained has gotta be a sequel to Parasites Lost. That worm did promise they'd return. I also think a couple episodes in the 10 I'm going to talk about in this video could be follow-ups, including one huge one, but I'll get there soon. And with the new episodes coming this summer, I think we should also expect them to be released weekly, probably, like they were previously. Hulu does binge drops for some shows and weekly drops for other shows, and I have a hard time imagining they would change that up for a show that was released weekly for so many years. Okay, that's enough bookkeeping. Let's get on to these titles, baby. These will be the titles for production season 8B or broadcast season 12, depending on how you follow the order of the series. This time I actually went through the database and found the order that the episodes seem to be intended to air in, so this is how they're supposed to air, allegedly. 1. The One Amigo 2. Quid's Game 3. The Temp 4. Beauty and the Bug 5. One is Silicon and the Other Gold 6. Attack of the Clothes 7. Planet Espresso 8. Cuteness Overlord, 9, The Futurama Mystery Library, and 10, Otherwise. Alright, honestly, I don't think I have quite as many ideas in regards to what each of these could mean, especially compared to the last 10, but let's dive in anyways because I think there's some really fun stuff in here. The One Amigo is obviously a play on the title The Three Amigos, though Futurama has parodied titles incredibly often without actually parodying the subject of that title parody. If I were to guess, I'd say that this is a Bender episode. It's confirmed that Bender was built in Mexico, his full name being Bender Bending Rodriguez, and we even saw him explore his origins in Tijuana in Lethal Inspection. I wonder if this could be a solo Bender Bender episode that somehow once again ties his origins back to Mexico? It's also possible it has nothing to do with his origins whatsoever, but that was my first thought. The second episode is called Quid's Game, obviously a play on the very popular Korean series Squid Game. Again, I don't think we should expect episode title parodies to necessarily mean the episode will be a parody of that piece of media. Often the altered word is the more important one, and this one switches squid to quids, but I don't know, quids is like British slang for money, and Squid Game is already about people in financial hardship going through an unreasonable game to alleviate said hardship, so I'm not entirely sure what to extrapolate from this title. The third episode is simply called The Temp. Not a ton to go on here, but my expectation is that this will be about a temporary employee joining the Planet Express crew and shaking things up at the office, or on deliveries. Feels like it might have a bit of a How Hermes Requisitioned His Groove Back vibe, when Hermes replacement Morgan changed things substantially at the office. The fourth episode is called Beauty and the Bug. Obviously a play on Beauty and the Beast. This feels like it could maybe be a Kiff and Amy episode. 
Kif's parents first appeared in The Beast with a Billion Backs and later The Butter Junk Effect, and we learn that Kif's species' final stage of life is a colony of flying hookworms. My best guess is that in this episode, Kif will finally go through that transformation into his final form, which will cause turmoil in his relationship, Amy being the beauty and Kif being the bug. It's very easy to imagine how difficult of a time Amy would have adjusting to being married to a colony of insects. If this did happen, I would expect they'd find some way to revert Kif by the end of the episode. Even though the series does have some status quo shifts, it's hard to imagine them making Kif remain a bunch of bugs for the rest of the series. And again, David X. Cohen did confirm that we'll be getting follow-ups and payoffs to stuff from the older episodes. The fifth episode is titled, One is Silicon and the Other Gold, playing on the phrase from the Make New Friends song, One is Silver and the Other Gold. My initial thought was that maybe this is somehow a follow-up to the Farnsworth Parabox with the alternate Gold Bender making a return. With the title being a play on Make New Friends, I could see Gold Bender and Fry getting along really well with our Bender becoming jealous, which admittedly is sort of the plot of the lesser of two evils, but with Fry and Bender switching places. But again, the changed word here is silicon, so I expect it's going to have something to do with that. And who knows? I imagine Bender could be as much as 40% silicon. Tough one to speculate on for sure. The sixth episode will be titled Attack of the Clothes, a clear title parody of Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones, the worst Star Wars movie. Don't at at me. I mean, honestly, what can we even speculate about this? Clothes are going to attack. I'm sure they have some kind of sci-fi shenanigans up their sleeves for this. <laughs> Get it? The seventh episode is called Planet Espresso, just playing on the show's own company name, Planet Express. I feel like it's pretty easy to just guess that this will be about Planet Express becoming some kind of a coffee shop. But the question is, will Fry drink 100 cups of coffee and go flash mode again? Only time will tell. Hopefully he doesn't kidnap anyone. The eighth episode is called Cuteness Overlord, which I think is just a play on the phrase cuteness overload. I expect this will be about some kind of alien that rules through its adorability, but this also sounds a bit like how that darn cats went down back in the Comedy Central run cat aliens hypnotizing people with their cuteness. Or maybe this will be a Nibblonian focused episode. They do seem to be a major authority in the universe, all while being slightly discomforted by their inherent adorability. Prepare Cuddlebug for deployment in 40 niblets. <sighs> Sometimes I fear we are cute. The ninth episode is called Futurama Mystery Library, and I think that this is almost certainly this season's anthology episode, likely adapting mystery or detective stories and fitting the Planet Express crew into the narrative. That being said, the most prominent library I remember in Futurama was in The Day the Earth Stood Stupid, where the brain spawn used their powers to put Fry and Leela into various books. This would be a dope framing device for this kind of anthology story. Not getting my hopes up, but it really would be a cool way to bring back the brain Brainspawn in a different, more fun way. They even used this concept in the Simpsons Futurama crossover comic. The Brainspawn literally inserted the Futurama gang into some Simpsons comics. Pretty clever. Also, if you remember, Fry was misspelling lots of words in that Day the Earth Stood Stupid episode, and this episode title says Library instead of Library. Huh? Maybe? Okay. And now we're here, the one I really want to talk about. This will be the 10th episode of season 8B, or season 12, depending on if you're a production or broadcast person. And you know what that means. Another patented Futurama series finale. The fifth one in its history. Unless the series has secretly been picked up for an additional 20 episodes already, I think history tells us that this episode will be written as though it is a series finale, just in case. Just like the Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings, Into the Wild Green Yonder, Overclockwise, and Meanwhile Before It. Which also means that it's definitely being written by Ken Keeler. Who else could it be? But here's the title for Futurama's fifth series finale. Otherwise. Oh, too simple and unassuming for ya? It is kinda weird that the last one was just called Meanwhile, and the one before was Overclockwise, which is kinda close to Otherwise, right? Okay, but what if they are finally following up the mystery that I have not shut up about since I started making Futurama videos? I am of course talking about the other. The thing I bring up constantly and made an entire video about. Here's a refresher. In the Why of Fry, after going back to 1999, Fry plans to stop Nibbler from pushing him into the freezer tube. Nibbler tries to convince Fry to go back to the future to help save the universe. Fry mentions Leela, and Nibbler says this. Ah, she must be the other. Now, sure, I know this is a play on Star Wars with Yoda saying there is another, and lots of people have tried to convince me that Nibbler simply lied to Fry to get him to go back to the future, but honestly, this felt so deliberate and intentional in its writing. Plus, Fry's entire dilemma in this episode was something done to him, not some crazy accident. And the idea that Nibbler lied just to manipulate Fry into going back to the future again is sort of a lateral move there. It doesn't really alleviate Fry's lack of free will in the situation. 
again. And with the Why of Fry closing with Nibbler claiming that the universe will need a savior again, it really feels like this episode never actually got a real follow-up like it should have. And Nibblonians never sought out Fry's help again after this, even though he did help save the universe and Into the Wild Green Yonder. So, with the title otherwise in a potential series finale episode, yeah, it's got my brain turning. Most of these series finales have to do with Fry and Leela's relationship in some way or another. So focusing on Fry's lack of a Delta brainwave and its universal implications and how Leela being the other might tie into that in a meaningful way feels like it could be a great way to potentially close out the series for a fifth time. And as we established, David X. Cohen explicitly said at the Sketchfest panel that we will be seeing follow-ups and payoffs to years old episodes. Maybe they've been watching my videos, who knows? I'd love for it to tie in the Nibblonians and the brain spawn once again, but if there is just some clear indication of Leela's importance as hinted at by Nibbler, and if it ends on another lovely heartfelt Futurama note like the last four finales, I think I'll be happy. But they really are tempting fate here. Meanwhile was a damn perfect ending. And if I'm being honest, I don't even expect this to be their final series finale. The anticipation for Futurama's return on Hulu seems to be very high. If I were to make an educated guess based on the history of the series, I would say that we will see a very similar pattern to what we saw back in the Comedy Central era. Back then, they picked up the show for 26 episodes, meant to be aired 13 per year. The Comedy Central premiere in 2010 was the network's highest rated night of the year, and its highest rated show on Thursday in primetime in the network's history. Before the the second half of the 26 order had even aired the following year, Comedy Central ordered an additional 26 episodes, totaling for 52 in the Comedy Central run. If I were to venture a guess, I think we'll see this exact pattern on Hulu. These first 10 episodes will deliver strong ratings with the anticipation of the show's return, Hulu will be very pleased and order an additional 20 episodes, and then over the next few years, viewership will slow down a bit once the anticipation and excitement is worn off, ending the Hulu run with a total of 40 episodes. And of course, a sixth series finale. But we'll see. I can't read the future. I don't have a what if machine, but a man can dream. Oh, a man can dream though. A man can dream. Johnny! To challenge!